Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Tony and I'm here for an hour of chair yoga with the Everyday Counts program. And although we'll be starting in the chair, the end of the class will be coming down to the floor if you choose. And I have a pillow here, you can have a cushion, and I have a bolster, a yoga bolster. This can be substituted with um, two, for example, two beach towels rolled up tightly or a blanket rolled up tightly, just so you have something firm and long to lie on. So I'm going to put those, or throw those, off to the side. So if you need to get those handy so um, you don't have a break in your practice halfway through and we do come down to the floor, you can go ahead and pause this and do that now. Otherwise, we're coming to our chair practice. So, finding a chair that's comfortable and stable for you so you feel secure and making sure you have a bit of space around you. Organizing yourself on the chair so you feel comfortable. Making a conscious choice, whether you want to sit into the back of the chair for support or sit away from it, or a little bit here and there throughout the class. There is no right and wrong here. No better, no more. Um, if you do more, it's going to be better for you. That is not the case. Today's class is all about posture. So figuring out what works for you. We're all put together differently and what works for one person is not going to work for the next. So you know your body better than anybody else. Don't put my guidance over the guidance of your body. We're going to start, as always, with a grounding and with a tuning in. And the idea of getting that tuning in in first means that as we progress through our practice, we have already set in motion the tools to listen to what it is that is best for us. And if at any time you want to go ahead and do another movement that suits you better, or if you want to rest, or you're done with the practice, please listen to that, honor yourself, and do what it is that you need today. So, once you're seated, you're gonna take those toes all the way down to that support underneath you. You can spread the toes if you like, even pick up the balls of the feet. Anything you want just to wake up the soles of your feet, connecting them downwards. Whether you're wearing socks, shoes, slippers, doesn't really matter. Just getting a sense of the earth underneath you. And you can go ahead if you like and close your eyes or soften or lower your gaze to really tune in to the soles of your feet. Place all of your awareness there. And notice this is your foundation. Notice if there's anything you would like to adjust so that foundation feels more rooted and more solid for you. You can even imagine, if you like, coming out from the soles of your feet, roots like tree roots growing down into the earth, all the way down past the soil, past the rocks, past the underground rivers, down as deep as you want to go. And imagine that full support, the earth is always there for us. Allow your legs to be supported. So releasing any um, held tension that you might not have even noticed. Keeping that sense of that support, that rootedness. Draw your awareness from the soles of your feet, slowly up through your feet and ankles, up through your lower legs, knees, upper legs, and taking your awareness now into your seat. Into your seat where you're supported by the chair. Noticing all the different places, all the different support 
warts that you have underneath you, the textures. Allow your upper body and your seat to rest into the chair. And again, you might not have even noticed, <clears throat> excuse me, you might not have even noticed some resistance there, some holding in the muscles that you can now give yourself permission to release. And notice just how supported your body is here. Always giving yourself permission to change things up, to adjust things to suit your body better. With this connection downwards from the pelvis down, now we use that rootedness to lift up through the spine. So it's kind of a pushing down and then we get this rebound through the spine lifting up through each vertebrae all the way to the base of the skull. And then the crown of the head lifts up too. So there's this awakening through the spine. Noticing if you're sitting more forward or back in your chair or to one side or the other and readjust so everything feels more aligned to your posture. Shoulders roll back and down softly. So you have some space between your ears which are lifting up at the crown of your head and your shoulders which are soft and loose. Collarbones widen. So notice how this feels. Go inside, noticing how your body feels. Noticing if there's particular areas of stress or tightness that this is putting on your body. And adjust and adapt things. Play around a little bit. Give yourself some space to change things up. And when you're ready, take a full breath in. Exhale it out slow and long, allowing a softness to creep into your body. Another three, just like that again, soft gaze or closed eyes. Becoming very aware of the language of your body, the sensations, what you notice. And imagine from your pelvic floor, there's a column going up through your spine, however curves, however curvy and twisty our spine is, imagine that column as wide as it needs to be to accommodate that, going up all the way up through the crown of your head. So there's this awakening to lifting from the rooting. And again, any awareness that arises that you need to shift or change things, then please go ahead and do that. Noticing your breath here. Maybe bringing the lips together, starting to breathe in and out through the nose. Steadying the breath in your own way as you still have part of your awareness in your body, noticing how your body feels here. Noticing habitual areas of tension, of tightness, doing whatever it is that you can to release that, whether it's taking a few breaths, whether it's shifting or changing how you're seated. And listening to the sound of your breath as it comes and goes. And matching 
that sound with a mantra on the inhale so s o so all the way to the top of your breath and on the exhale hum h u m all the way down to the bottom said to be the sound of the breath itself so hum notice any areas in the breath that feel stilted or a little jumpy and do your best to steady that out it doesn't have to be perfect we're not interested in perfect we're just trying and if this breath doesn't suit you now or at any time you can of course release it come back to the easiest breath you can find rooting down feet in seat rising from there the very tip of your nose with that breath you can keep your eyes closed or soft starting to circle through the nose inhaling up exhaling down notice any clicks and clacks in your body notice sensations as they arise it may surprise you you pay attention to sensations that they may not be in the neck at all. Allowing those movements to become as smooth as possible, maybe making them smaller or bigger, depending on what it is that you're understanding from your body. You're ready. Chin comes down towards the chest on an exhale, and we're going around in the opposite direction. Steady and smooth. Bigger or smaller. Keep the breath steady, so hum breath. And keeping the spine neutral up until the base of your neck. Next, exhale, chin comes down towards the chest and rest there. So hum breath, noticing how this feels. Noticing any tension, any tightness. when you're ready, the crown of the head comes all the way up. Taking that right hand dangling down on the inhale, I'm going to draw that shoulder up towards the ear and on the exhale, take it down, keeping the spine quite neutral. Inhaling up, exhaling down. You might notice this in different places of your body. Staying here or on the inhale with the shoulder up taking the right ear towards the shoulder and on the exhale drawing it away as that shoulder lowers and that's going to allow the sensation to get a little stronger so if that is not what you need keep the head neutral again the movement here is in the shoulder and the neck the spine is quite neutral Rooting to rise still. Last exhale. Coming back to center. Right hand back to support. Left hand dangles down. Allow that arm to get heavy. Inhaling the shoulder lifts. Exhaling down. Notice how this feels in your body. Keeping that spine again quite neutral. Adding on left ear to left shoulder and drawing it away on the exhale. Getting that motion through the neck but also through the shoulder. Last one here. 
Then this time we'll take both hands down, allowing them to get it soft. Inhaling, shoulders come up towards the ears, exhaling down and back. So we're circling through both shoulders here. Again, keeping your eyes closed or lowered or soft allows you to tune into what your body is feeling, giving you the opportunity to listen and adjust if you need to. So hum breath, so on that inhale, hum on the exhale. Next exhale, you're gonna take that round in the opposite direction. Another two here, resting if you already need to, so hum breath. And then that left hand comes back to support, turn the right thumb forward, bending from the elbow, inhaling up, exhaling down, allowing the fingertips to reach towards the floor. Again, spine is neutral, we're still rooting to rise and we still have that so hum breath. Option to start to move from the shoulder. And again, awareness to the spine. So it's the shoulder that's doing the work here. The spine is staying neutral. Arm can come up to any height. That arm can be as far away or as close to your side of your body as you wish. Maybe the fingertips even come back behind you on the top of that inhale or exhale. Mm -hmm. Next time that hand comes down, allowing it to get quite heavy. And then from here, moving from the shoulder, inhaling up, exhaling down. Coming towards shoulder height. It doesn't have to get there. And then the option is here with a neutral spine to start to consider where your range of motion is here within the Soham breath keeping the spine quite neutral. Notice if you're adding tension anywhere, and if that's the case, see if you can rest a little easier. Next time that arm comes down, we're gonna take it back to support. Take a breath in. Exhale it out, left hand dangles down, so hum breath from the elbow, inhaling up, thumb to the sky, exhaling down. Excellent place to stay right here, or if you want to add on, starting to come from the shoulder. Bigger is not better here. So we're really working with the range of motion in your shoulders without getting the spine involved. So we're still rooting to rise, crown of the health, head is still reaching up. And you're working within the so hum breath. Noticing if as you take the arm up, if there's any protruding of the front ribs, if there is, you can just go to less height. Same thing on the exhale. If there's any movement through the spine, see if you can adjust the arm movement to keep the spine neutral. So hum breath. And that arm can be as close or as far away from the side of your body as you choose. No right and wrong. Resting if you need to. Put another two here. down 
from here, moving from the shoulder, inhaling up to the side, exhaling down. And again, spine is neutral, so we're not uh, shifting over towards the right. The movement is coming from the shoulder. And this just builds up our awareness to where it is those micro movements that we compensate through the spine. So being very honest with yourself, so hum breath. The side may be very different from the other side, so not allowing any judgment, any criticism, just being curious. Another two, resting if you choose to. So hum. Hands coming back to support any movement you need to release any tension, go ahead. And if you're sitting into the back of your chair and want to slide forward as we get down into the spine, please go ahead. Rooting down, feet in seat, rising up from there. On the inhale, as if I just hooked the front of your sternum forward, drawing the hands back towards the pelvis, heart opens towards the front. On the exhale, push the fingertips away towards the knees and we scoop the belly, so we round through the back of the heart, inhaling and exhaling. Noticing how this feels, this extension on the inhale of the spine, flexion on the exhale. You might notice that there are areas that feel much more comfortable than others. Getting into the neck as you lift on the inhale, lower the chin on the exhale, only if that feels okay to you. And then pelvic tilts, the anterior tilt on the inhale as you send that tailbone out behind you, arching into the lower back and curling over onto the back of the pelvis of the exhale. Always working within what your body is comfortable with. And we know the body's comfortable if the breath is steady. As soon as the breath starts to change, then just notice your movements and notice if you're doing anything to change the breath and try and keep those so hum breaths as steady and smooth as possible. Adding on, on the inhale, taking the arms into a cactus elbows and back of the hands come as far back as feel comfortable for you and that may not be very far at all. That's the inhale. On the exhale, pinky fingers, elbows come towards each other. They don't have to get there. Curling the elbows in towards the belly button. Inhaling, wide heart, wide front body, over the pectoral muscles, all the way through the arms. Exhaling, wide back body. Working always with what feels comfortable for you and within that so hum breath. If there's any adjustments you need to make, please go ahead, play with the movement. No momentum here. So it's a steady, smooth movement that is controlled. If you need to bring momentum into it, then see if you can back off, do a little less and keep it controlled with the breath. So you're aware of what's going on in your body at all times, as best as you can. Three more. If the arms are too much, then take them all the way back down to the legs. Again, more is not better here. Last breath, coming all the way back to center. Nice. Now from here, I'm going to take that right arm down and as if cutting off um, kind of on the front plane of the body, there's a glass panel right on that right side. I'm sending that right palm towards that glass panel. 
And then from here, we're gonna circle through the right shoulder blade, through the right hand. So as if you have a cloth in your right hand and you're just polishing that window, imagine the shoulder blade circling on the back body on the right side. So we've got lift and extension and contraction. Steady breath, so hum. Notice if you can keep a neutral spine and the shoulder blades doing the work here, rather than allowing your spine to come with you. And then I'll take it round in the opposite direction. I've got some snap, crackle and pops in that shoulder for me. Mm -hmm. Last one. And then from here, bending through that elbow, rooting to rise. On the inhale, we're lifting up, keeping the same angle through the elbow. Exhaling, drawing that elbow in towards the ribs without popping the front ribs forward, so neutral spine. Inhaling and exhaling. So this is like a half wall angel. And on that exhale, we'll take the arm down as if there's a mason jar there. Open and close it from the shoulder joint rather than just the wrist. Releasing tension. And we're coming to the left side. Glass plate, you've got a rag in your hands and you're taking your palm up against that glass plate right in front of your body or at a comfortable angle for you. Rooting to rise, so hum breath and here, taking circles, keeping the spine as neutral as possible. And this one might be more challenging, might be um, easier than the other side. Just be curious, no judgments, no inner dialogue about stories and why. And then we're going to take that round in the opposite direction. The reason we're working with the shoulder here is we're working with the rhomboids, which is the group of muscles between the shoulder blades, which more or less is the root of the neck. So any postural stuff with especially forward head where our chin's judging forward from all of our um, eating and watching TV and reading and everything and driving and everything we do in the front of the body. We're trying to um, warm up the rhomboid so we can then readjust that posture. Nicely done. From there, elbow bends, keeping the back of the hand as far back as is comfortable in your shoulder without changing anything in your spine. More is not better. Working with your body is where you want to be. This is the exhale, drawing the elbow in towards the ribs, inhaling, arm comes up. Same angle in the, sh um, the elbow. I'm going to be using this as we come down to the floor later, once all of this is warmed up. Nicely done. And then I'm gonna take that elbow in, hand down, like there's a mason jar there, opening and closing. Beautiful, again, from the shoulders, not just from the rest. Alrighty, any adjustments you need to make in your body, Go ahead, and then we're gonna play again with this um, kind of upper mid chest. So from here, feet first. So we're gonna walk heel toe those feet in towards each other, and if this is not comfortable for you, no big deal. You can always, for more stability, take um, some kind of support in between you, like a pillow between your ankles and knees, especially for those of you who don't like bones knocking against each other or that sensation. 
option to stay here. Now the more forward you come on your chair, the less support you have, the uh, further back you are, the more support you have. We are going to come into some spinal movements from here. So you get to play around and change what it is that you want. Um, and you can adjust as we go along. Feet rooting down, drawing in towards each other. So the ankles, the knees, even the hips draw in towards each other and we get that alertness through the spine. So maybe we grow a millimeter taller. Stay here, softly through the shoulders, wide through the collarbones, take a breath in. So hum, release tension, but keep the posture. Take your awareness inwards. This may be where you want to stay with the feet. Option number two is to walk the left foot closer in and cross over the right ankle. Great place to be. Knees coming in towards each other, everything. Just like when we were drawing the ankles um, parallel to each other, everything draws into the midline and we still get this rooting, drawing in to rise up. Great place to be. Last option is to take that right knee over the top of the left, readjust the left foot so the knee is un over the top of the ankle, rather at some kind of odd, weird angle. Ankle can be out to the side or like drawing in towards the knees and the thighs or we're drawing in through the entire legs and towards each other. Now, this is going to depend on how it feels, especially in the lumbar back area. So you get to decide. Any SI joint issues amongst you, you're going to stay at the first position. So we're rooting to rise, drawing in and lifting up. Again, where it's a balanced posture here, depending on how um, close you are towards the front of your chair. And then the last thing here is we're gonna take the hands in towards each other. Elbows start down. They don't have to come in towards each other, but the palms are pressed towards each other here. You can interlace the hands depending on what feels comfortable in your hands and wrists. Elbows draw in. The further the elbows are towards your belly, the easier that's going to become. On the inhale, I'm going to draw the elbows up, maybe shoulder height, maybe higher. Exhaling down, keeping the spine neutral. So, hum. Mm hmm. Playing with your body. Maybe we draw the elbows a little closer in towards each other, maybe not. The further they come in towards each other, the more challenging it is across the top of the shoulders. And again, that rhomboid area between the shoulder blades. Last option here to add on. On the inhale, we're extending the spine. You've already been here in seated cat and cow. On the exhale, drawing the elbows in towards the thighs and towards the belly, depending on what feels comfortable for you. Inhaling and exhaling. This is certainly not a particularly comfortable place to be, but it's fantastic for balance and keeping everything in your awareness at once. We're rooting to rise. We're drawing in towards the midline and we've got as much or as little pressure going as you want in your hands, your elbows. We've got another two here. Rest if you need to. Getting compression through a lot of the joints. Last exhale. Notice which thumb and first finger is, um, if you've got a bind, release the arms. Release the legs if they're bound too. We're just gonna wash the knees from side to side. And you can take opposite elbows. And we're gonna take the elbows and the gaze away from the knees just to reduce any tension in the shoulders. 
coming back to center. So home on the breath. Remember, you get to decide how much or how little of this that you do. So if you just did a little bit too much, pay attention to that as we come to the other side. First one, rooting to rise. So hum breath. And then from here, we're gonna draw those knees and ankles in towards each other. And if you need something in between there, go ahead. Everything comes into midline. Rooting down with the feet in the seat, drawing in ankles, knees, hips, all the way up through the spine. Take a big breath in, keep the posture, soften into it. From here, option number one. Option number two is to cross the left ankle over the right. Left foot is rooted down Everything draws in towards center. Again, any SI joint issues, this is not where you're going. This feels enough, stay here. Last option is the left leg comes over the right. Right ankle is directly underneath the right knee. Ankle out to the side or we're drawing in depending on what it feels like in your body. And this right here may be enough. So hum on the breath. Taking the hands in towards each other. And if you're interlacing your hands, opposite thumb and first finger come on top. It's gonna to feel a bit awkward, no big deal. Roll the shoulders back and down, elbows in towards each other, they don't have to get there. Keeping the spine neutral, so we've got that rooting to rise. Inhaling, the elbows come up. Exhaling down, and this may be enough for you. As much or as little pressure drawing in towards center as feels good. You might notice there are places in your body that start to tense up. Do what you can to ease that up. Option to add in the spine. On the inhale, we're lifting. On the exhale, we're drawing in, rounding, flexing the spine. Inhale, extension. Exhale, drawing in. And you get to play around with this. Let it be your own. So hum on the breath. Notice as much as you can that is going on in your body. Notice what your body is telling you. Get another two or three, resting if you need to. Last exhale. We're coming up to center afterwards, releasing the arms, roll through the shoulders, unbinding the legs. And then from here, just allowing the knees to come from side to side. You can take the gaze away from the knees and the arms too. The arms are going in the same direction as the knees I did last time. Or any other movement you need to release tension. To keep releasing that tension, we're gonna take the feet a little bit wider. Adjust to what's comfortable for you. Rooting down, feet and seat to rise up. Once again, shoulders are soft and down, collarbones are wide. And adjusting whether your shoulders are forward or back, more to one side or the other, and come to a place that works for you. Hands supporting you. So hum breath. Excellent place to stay here, just being in external rotation. Or on the inhale, we're drawing the ribs forward. Ex roll, exhale, rolling them back. So we've got that circling through the rib cage as if we're hula hooping through the mid ribs. Once again, no momentum involved here. A 
aware of everything that your body is telling you. And this is strengthening, stabilizing through all of the muscles, holding up the spine, but we're keeping a flow in there. So rather than doing static movement, keeping those circles allows us to put into practice all that engagement. Just like when we're walking around and not doing yoga, this is about noticing what's happening in your spine within loose fluid movement. Coming back in the opposite direction when you're ready. Inhaling and exhaling, always paying attention to what's going on. Closing the eyes, softening the gaze, whatever feels good to you to really get involved in the language of your body. Two more. And then coming all the way back to center. And when you're ready, heel towing the legs in towards each other. Rooting down to rise, so hum of the breath. from here. Rooting down through that left leg, that's your foundation, lifting up through the right heel. On the inhale, exhale, taking it down. Great place to be right here. Option, next inhale is to lift up through the heel and stay there, right hand, right knee. From here, this is the inhale, we're going to exhale, take the heel down, and we're rolling through the hip joint here. Great place to be, right here, keeping the ball of the foot on the floor. Or rooting down through the left leg, rooting to rise. So nothing changes in the spine, but we're taking the foot up. Right hand, right knee, or you can use your hands underneath the thigh. And we're circling from here. Noticing what's happening through the spine. Starting to bring some balance in as, a little, as well as that range of motion through the hip. Rest whenever you need to. Keeping the movement as steady as you can. And if you don't need the hand, then for the last three, allow the hip to move in its own volition. And then when you're ready, we'll pause and take whatever you're doing in the other direction, whether you've got the ball of the foot on the floor, hand to knee, you can release any amount of pressure on the arm, or again, working around in its own way, but not quickening up the movement. Last breath here, and then we'll take the leg all the way down, foot to the floor, hand to the knee, and just wash the knee in and out. Coming back to center. Right foot roots down. On the inhale, left heel lifts. Exhaling down. Great place to be. Great place to stay. If you want to, next time that heel comes up, that's the inhale. Hand to the knee, and we're rolling round in a circle, getting a little range of motion through that left hip. Great place to be. Rooting down through the right foot, everything else is neutral, the movement is through the hip. Or we're taking the left hand in front of that left knee, a little flex in that left ankle, and getting that range of motion through the hip. You can do every other one, every third one, whatever feels comfortable for you. Keep that right leg connecting downwards. Notice what's happening through the posture. So hum breath. And the option is here to release that hand pressure as much as you like or release it completely. 
steady and smooth. And then when you're ready, pausing and taking it around in the opposite direction. If you need breaks in between directions, take what it is that you need. Right foot is your foundation. So hum breath. Option to stay here, option to release a little or completely from your hands. Last one here. And taking the foot down to center, hand to the knee and washing the knee in and out to release some of that tension from the hip. Root down through the feet and the seat. Rise up from there. Collarbones wide. Shoulders soft and down away from the ears. Notice what's happening with your upper body. Whether you want to adjust it back or forward depending on how it feels for you. Come back to the so hum breath. And notice all the different parts of the spine from the base of your skull all the way down to the base of your tailbone. Having built up all that awareness through the movement, you're going to use that and come down to the floor. Now if you do not wish to come to the floor, you can do the same thing with the support behind you in the chair the bolster behind you drawing the shoulders back, head and towards the bolster or support as much as possible. And we're opening up through the chest here to bring the um, base of the skull back a little. Oops, <laughs> otherwise I'm gonna meet you down on the floor. Bring your bolster or your rolled towels or blanket and a pillow and anything else you need for relaxation and I'll see you down there. Here I am, down on the floor, with my bolster, my pillow, I also have a blanket. So, I'm going to take my bolster along my mat. Depending on how long that support is, you may or may not need this. I've got a blanket here, right at the base of that bolster, and I'm going to sit with my lower back against there. From there, I'm going to take that pillow so it can support my head and depending on what feels comfortable, if your neck is, if your head is super forward, you might need extra um, pillow and support underneath there. I'm going to roll back onto that pillow, adjusting myself so it feels comfortable. Now if this is too much on your lower back, Make sure you have more support under your pelvis to bring your pelvis to the level of the support. If your bolster or support is super long, you can even rest the base of your um, pelvis on top of that. From here, adjusting the pillow so there's no strain in your neck. Option number one is to keep the hands towards the sky down by your hips, opening up through the chest. Option number two is to lift them up out towards the side or even open up into um, some kind of cactus. What we're trying to do here is to draw the shoulders back down towards the earth. Chin down towards the chest. You can take an eye pillow here if you want. Knees to the sky, feet to the floor. Feet wide, knees towards each other. That's going to ease things in your lower back. And wherever you are, you go ahead and soften your gaze. Close your eyes. And start to focus in on your body. Notice if there's anything that you can adjust or adapt for yourself. If this is not a sustainable place for you to be, then adjust something, adapt it, or maybe this is not for you. 
opening up after all of that work, especially through the posterior muscles, especially the rhomboids where we're and the trapezius muscles coming all the way up the mid and the upper back and into the neck, opening up now through the front of the chest, bringing the shoulders down soft and heavy. Turn your awareness inwards and start to focus on that so hum breath, the sound of the breath itself. Now, if you get any kind of pinching, any tingling, any numbness in your fingers, then you're adjusting the hands further back down towards your hips or even resting on your belly. That just means that you're pinching a nerve up in the shoulders, which is something we do not need to do. Always working again with your body. Keeping the breath moving steadily in and out. So hum. Taking your awareness inside and noticing places of tension. Noticing where you could ease things up. Be honest with yourself if bringing your arms further back down makes things a little more comfortable. Again, we're not trying to get anywhere really quick here. And then releasing the muscles in your face. Releasing the muscles through your neck and throat. Allowing the shoulders to get heavy, the heart to soften. here for another five breaths or longer. You're welcome to stay here for as long as you like. But definitely being honest with yourself about how your body is feeling here, how your breath is. Releasing tension where you find it. are, you come down by your hips, palms facing down. You have a few options here depending on what feels comfortable for you. You can bring your heels right underneath your knees and roll to one side or another gently off the bolster. Or chin comes in towards your chest, supporting the neck and that's only if you don't have any neck and head things going on elbows and hands supporting you, pushing yourself up, knees come to one side and you can release those props. And if you have that support, I would highly recommend taking the support of the bolster underneath your knees as you come down to relaxation. Back of the heart on the floor now. Coming to your shavasana, your relaxation pose. And again, that bolster underneath the knees or the top of the thighs will be great for releasing the lower back. Wherever it is that you are, settle into the earth underneath you. Any support you need underneath your head, please take it. And when you're ready, take a big breath in. 
and exhale it out on the exhale release your body down to the earth and beneath you every exhale that follows releasing down and notice what that feels like notice how your shoulders your upper back your neck your head feel Allow the breath to come back to its own soft, easy, natural rhythm. And tune in to the soft, so hum of your breath. following the sound, so hum with every breath. Present to anything that arises, whatever arises, watch it come and watch it go with no attachment, sensations, feelings, thoughts, and come back to the gentle, so hum of your breath. Staying here for as long as you like, tuning me out if you wish to stay longer. I'll simply start to tune into the support underneath you, all the different places your body is supported. From your head all the way down to your arms and legs. Starting to take more mindful breaths in on the inhale, exhale, soft and long. Bringing your awareness back into your body, crown of your head to the tip of your fingers and toes. And with that awareness back in your body, start to allow intuitive movements to start to drift through your body in your own way. If you're still on your back, knees to the sky, feet to the floor, and you can either wash those knees from side to side or give them a little hug, bring them in towards you. Awaken in your own way, in movement. Wherever you are, maybe coming to rest on one side if you're coming to a seat to finish. And take your time. And when you're ready, using the support you need to come up to a seat or wherever it is you prefer to finish your practice.
rooting down into the support underneath you and rising from there. Adjusting your body with the awareness you have. Again, maybe noticing or imagining those roots coursing downwards through the earth to ground you, to steady you, to connect you to that support as you rise from there. Notice how everything feels in your shoulders, your neck, your head, your heart. Back body, front body as you bring your hands into a gesture of closing. Whatever that may be for you. Take a breath in. Exhale, chin down towards your chest, softly. Thank yourself for your practice. And from my heart to yours, I thank each and every one of you for making the time to be with me today. Namaste.